or do I have top tip number 22.7 million? I'm going to be trying this out instead, a little Knox box. You get your piece of cable, you don't cut the cable. This connector cuts into it by itself. It's a little peon, peon thermal glass nipple. Yo, welcome back to the channel. Jump straight in, we're on the job already. I'll show you what I'm gonna be fitting. Some pretty cool stuff. So we've got this straight off the bat, uh, thermo glass. It is like a little radiator, heater kind of thing. But it's just a piece of glass, as you can see. And it just hangs from either the ceiling or the wall on those brackets and it's going up there on them brackets like that. So we'll show you that. Um, we fitted these the other day. Let me show you these. Not seen these ones before. I'm just gonna put them. Click, uh, Skullmore Click, Definity Range, Flat Plate, um, and it went on lovely matte black. The walls aren't level or anything like that, but it's uh, it done the job. It done as they said, it fits on uneven walls and switch free gang all matte black switch down light switch it in there e6 pros we've got another free gang switch there that's for outside lights that's going to be a usb type c and a socket in obviously that style anyway we've not got them yet they're out of stock so what we fit in we're fitting this thermo glass we fit in a little Philips um, floodlight with no PIR. That's just going to be switched on from there. It's not connected up there yet, don't worry. And usually what I used to use, you've probably seen me do it before, is a little, wig, uh, little whisker box behind it. But instead, I'm going to be trying this out instead. A little Knox box. Um, it's basically like a little, let me just open it up. little junction box comes already. It's IP65, I think. Yep, 65 says it there. Um, comes with a little screw to lock it, cable clamp and way goes all set up. You've got one rear entry. And obviously two there, so you can put Colpex in them. I'm not sure whether you can put a stuffing gland in them because obviously it's sort of split in two. I'm not sure how that works yet, I'll have to have a look. I'm going to show you a bit about this uh, company, this m because they've... I've got a couple of their bits right now here that I'm not using on this job. I just want to show you them. You've probably not seen them before in the UK. I think they're an Australian company. Dryer. Um, yeah, I think they're an Australian company and they're pretty new to the UK market. And one of the downlights is pretty, pretty cool. I'll show you that. Um, I'm not going to give my opinions on any of it. I'm just because I've not used it yet. Uh, I'll let you make your own mind up on it. Anyway. Let me show you uh, an outdoor socket click again. I use a lot of click stuff to be fair for accessories. And then this integral LED curve wall light with PIR, which is just going outside the back door there. Um, and that I think is that. So as for the thermo glass thing in my jig, that's because it's going up there on like a 45 degree angle. That's a flex outlet plate that it connects into. We've already done that and it's wired from this fuse spur there which comes up to the thermostat which we've not got yet oh, have we got it now i'll check i think i might have that and then i'll put the thermostat on there that then runs over to that and does that so i don't know where to begin yeah let me show you these these other bits emelec apex so that's a floodlight like a twin spot that kind with a with a with a sensor obviously i've never used it before but that's that um there's not many of these on on the market to be honest you sometimes down the side of houses you could do with a spot either way so yeah there's there's another option you don't, there's not many companies that make a twin spot like that with the pir it's all movable but that's obviously not much different than any others this this however 
let me just set this uh, GoPro up on the stand. So, first of all, it's got three warm white, neutral white or natural white, whatever that is, and white, I assume. So obviously you've got the colour change switch there. Uh, a, a nice, good half, maybe 600 mil lead. So just move the light out of the way. And then the connector, this is where it differs from a hell of a lot of other lights. In fact, I don't think I've seen any down light with this. So they call this the rapid connector. It's got test points underneath here. Let me see, let me see, can I open it? So it's got your test points there underneath that rubber so you can set stick your test probes in. And inside, it just looks like that. So what you do, you undo, you take that part off, you, you get your piece of cable, you don't cut the cable, this connector cuts into it by itself. So you lie your cable across that channel sort of cut out there, I don't know if you can see that. It clips in there, like that. And then you hook that back on. Well, let me, before I hook it on, I'll show you. So it's got the live, neutral and earth pins there. I assume the polarity for live and neutral doesn't matter because obviously you won't know which way the cable was. Um, and then obviously when your cable's in there, let me try and put it back together. I'm struggling a bit here because I've got the stitches in my hand. So bear with me. I can't put a lot of pressure on it or it sort of splits open again. There we go, clip. So now obviously it's like that and you'd have your cable running right through and then pins just peer straight into the cable and that's that. Let me know what you think about that. I've never used it, obviously it's the only one I've got. I just wanted to see it because if anyone knows me on a bit more of a personal level, level, they'll know that as soon as I see something new in the electrical industry, I'm all over it like a rash. I can't help myself. Um, Always trying to see what, what's good. That's hence why I'm using this instead of my Wago box. I'm going to try that out. Two screws there. Um, it's got two entry holes there, but obviously you couldn't have an in and out because you only got uh, Wagos for two cores. I'll leave a link in the description for these. They're on Amazon. Um, if you like them, go and have a look. Right, where should we start then? I think we'll start with this thermal glass. Get that job out of the way first, eh? All right, so I've marked that out now. Um, I was just trying to figure out, should it go center of this or center of the window? Because it's slightly off the center of the worktops is kind of like there, obviously center of the window. I've gone center of the window because that'll look the normalist. Normalist, is that a word? And uh, as you can see, that's where a fixing would go center of the window and that little bit next to it if you can see it, is where it'd go if it was centre of the worktop and it's just a bit too close to that. I don't think I'd get a good fix in there. So I've gone for that basically and it's just got catenary wire, gripple wire, whatever you want to call that. Screwed in there. Same on that side. And then the, the flex just runs up the gripple, catenary wire, and it even comes with those little rubber things that'll hold it on to the, the wire to try and neaten it up. And then you just fix those to the wall, screw them in the top of them, feed your gripple wire through and obviously that automatically locks it in. So I'm just going to fit the brackets up there now. As you can see, brackets are now fitted with the little holder. It's only one screw, but I think I'd rather two. Hey, check this out, Nick Bundy if you're watching. GoPro 9, LED lights, no flickering. So we are, you're supposed to be a professional at this. No flickering. Yeah, that's them on. And then, obviously, this uh, little peon, peon thermal glass sits on the edges like so, on a little 45 degree. And obviously you can adjust that with a gripple wire. Um, so whatever you want. It only gets hot on the front of the glass. The back of the glass doesn't get hot. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how that works. So I've never fitted thermal glass before, I've never even heard of it, but yeah, the back doesn't get hot. I have tried it as well. The front gets like 250 degrees, back, nothing weird. And then obviously I'm just gonna go straight in the bottom of that. I'm trying to trying to get a bit of a nice connection where it's 
it's almost invisible but it's not much you can do because it only comes with that length of cable screw them in there like that and then that little nipple we've all seen them before if you've used catenary wire before or any kind of gripple it's that kind of thing push it in and it won't come out unless you release it like that and obviously we can adjust the angle slightly once they're in right then there's that obviously it's not done i've not i've got to just connect that into the flex outlet it's just simple live and neutral and obviously i need to cut down them catenary wires i'll just leave a little coil on the back of each one just in case it gets adjusted somehow it doesn't look level but it is because i've just checked it with the trusty old stabilo uh, I might just adjust it so it looks level with the the window, the top of the window, because obviously that's probably not straight. And if that is straight, and that's not, that looks like it's not level, and that's worse. So I'll probably just level it off by eye with with the window or the ceiling, whichever one that is, is that's making it look out. Because there's level, and then there's level. There's levels to this. I've done it to myself. Look. I put that flex outlet on the other day on a second fix the kitchen and I've put the lugs in look done it how how I've done that to myself now I'm gonna struggle getting them out or do I have top tip number 22.7 million yes I do let me show you tape why do I use tape I'll show you why I use tape well I use tape because we've always I've always got tape obviously we've always got tape grab your tape stick it just stick it in there like that, get it on the little lug, whip it out and then let me just get the other one out first whip it out like that and then look there they are, you're not going to drop them, you're not going to lose them you can just throw that there on the side and when you're finished they're uh, they nicely in position for you how's that for the top tip? Obviously, people say blue tack and all that, but who's, how many electricians are carrying blue tack around? Come on, blue tack. Not had that since I was in year four. Let's get this connected up. There's my little coils, just to give them a bit more of adjustment if you want in future. It looks quite brown on this uh, camera, that glass, but it isn't. It's really, it's uh, it's pretty pretty much clear on here. So whatever that glass is made out of, this camera's picking it up. Right, that's that sorted, all connected up. See, it looks brown, I don't know why. It's almost pretty much invisible from here. In fact, I can't even see where I've fitted it now. Can you, where is it, is it there? Yeah, so as you can see, it's um, it's looking nice. It's, uh, oh, hang on a minute, is that it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's quite smart actually. It's, uh, if you've got a small kitchen with nowhere for a radiator, that is a nice little, nice little touch that is. Yeah, happy with that. Can't wait to feel the heat. Next up, let's go for Eeny Meeny Miny Mo catch it. Let's do that wall light, yeah? Curve wall light. Let's go for that. The outside socket is running from a switched fused connection unit under the sink, which is there, and then obviously the load side goes to the outside socket because why not? Better not turn that sink on, Ada. Oh no, there's no tap on it anyway. What am I on about? Definitely not turning the sink on, am I? Oh, 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 almost forgot to uh, ruin the next electrician's day. Yep, yeah, next stop, this Integral LED. Never used them before, never even used that brand, so if any of you have, let us know if they're any good. Hopefully they are, and hopefully it lasts. Quite nice, actually. Um, PIR on it. Obviously, I've just turned the lighting circuit off because this was live. This was fed from the... I just had it. It was on permanently live fed. So I've just cut the end off to recoup my way. goes best part of the job. Um, and that is going. Going just here next to the door. Hopefully this... There's obviously... There's been a light here before. So I'll clean up all that old silicon, the white stuff. And uh, crack on from there. So before, I'm just going to show you the back of this. Obviously that earth fly lead just screws up to there as well. Plenty of space in there, plenty of space. I've left the cables quite long, which means it can be changed in future. That's going to clip on there nicely. This is from Expert Electrical, by the way. You've all heard of them. There's a discount code flying around, I do believe. Not that I know it off the top of my head or anything, just saying. Uh, yeah, and there's loads of space in there. It is quite a nice light. This is the one with the PIR, so obviously it's got this uh, 
this as well for the PIR. Uh, imagine the one without a PIR, how much space it'd have then. Woo! I'd get in there myself with them. That's that connected up. And then it just slots on nicely. That's a nice fit. Excuse me, I've got two screws in my mouth. That's that's uh, if you can understand tradesman, that is tradesman talk. So obviously, I'm going to screw these two screws in. I can't do it while I'm holding a camera. If the screws are still in my mouth. <laughs> I'll see you in a moment. And that is that. Nice solid fitting actually, quite like it. Not bad. I'll tell you more about my hand in a moment. Oh yeah, before I do forget, because um, I keep meaning to do this, the, the person that won the Versal Consumer Unit, JRC Electrical Jack, he also has a YouTube channel. I'll stick a link in the description. Go and check out his videos. Uh, he's an alright guy to be honest. He's not as good as me and his videos aren't as interesting as mine or anything like that. But yeah, go and watch him because I do like him. He's a nice man. Click outdoor socket. I'm just going to connect this up now. I'm, I'm just going to record this now so I can tell you a little story about what I did to my hand last week or whenever it was. First of all, I'll click sockets with that rubber seal. Definitely one of the best things ever put on an outdoor socket. Yeah, so what was I doing with a chisel? Well, I'll tell you. Half, this was in my own house, half past ten, Sunday night. Uh, I was changing the latch. You know, the little latch that goes inside the the, the door, so that you get like the, the little, the little I don't know what they call the latch, or they call the latch. I'd assume it is called a latch. So yeah, I was changing one of them. And... Uh, the new one was a bit bigger than the old, not much, just a tiny bit, just needed a little bit taken out the old. So I went into the van, got me a brand new chisel that I won on Instagram the other day, brand new, nice, dead sharp backhoe chisel, if you don't follow me on Instagram go and have a look, Gable Smith. Um, yeah, I did put pictures of it on there, I'm not going to put a picture of my hand on YouTube because I don't think YouTube will like it very much because it's a bit gory. I did put it on Instagram the other day. Um, so yeah, I was holding the door like that. So I had the door there, hole there. Quite stupid when you think back now, yeah? I had this chisel in the hole. And I was just ramming it dead hard, just taking the bits out of the back. And obviously it came right out of the hole and went bang. And it took a right big chunk off me and there. I had stitches in it and all sorts. Uh, and then about five days later, I was stripping a cable at work, obviously, and uh, pulled it and ripped it back open again. I've literally just last night it was, I took the bandage off again and uh, just put this plaster over it today so I keep it clean. We're fully into the getting this socket connected up, aren't we? We're in this together, let's go! me 5.5 using a four mil driver on a socket ooh kind of animal am I and three mil sleeving instead of two what am I doing disgusting behaviour disgusting behaviour yeah get it nice and tight grab your woo McDo's Line them up, spin them in a little bit like that on one side, spin them in a little bit like that, and then go full pace, push it back. I hate it when there's a bit of a squeak to it. Lovely. I like the colour of them. So that's where I'm going to put the Nox box, and I'll show you that in a moment let me show you where i'm at quite like that little knox box it's pretty cool you know so there's the light lovely little phillips i love these quality's ace on them little caps that go over there stop them rusting knox box just above it so obviously all we need to do now cut this flex down get it under that clamp bish bash bosh close the lid and you're done 
nice that nice and tidy easy to change the light in future I'm gonna do that and I'll see you in a moment connected in beautiful I mean that hole there you can it's designed so a Copex Nicholas Copex can sit in there if you need to uh, it's got the seal there where they see the cables sat in that seal same on the top so when that closes it's fully sealed I mean it does have that hole in the bottom you can't put a stuffing gland in there but it is sealed on the inside and it's clamped in tight so it doesn't need one so there you go what do you think let us know drop us a drop us a quick comment in case anyone hasn't noticed I do reply to every single comment so if you do want a little start a little conversation I'll gladly go on for hours and hours and hours. All done, on. No flicker again with the GoPro. <laughs> so yeah, let's just have a look at this thermostat first because they have got it. It's this uh, Ketotec, however you say that. It's just a smart thermostat. You can connect it to your home devices. So obviously Amazon and Google, if you want. Um, Obviously, it's a black digital one, quite deep. So we've got 35 mil boxes throughout this kitchen already, anyway. So that's uh, that's that sorted. Comes with a little floor temperature probe, but we're not using it for underfloor heating, so we don't need that. It's as simple as number four and five connections. There is for that probe, but we're not using that. It has got a room stat built into this as well, so you don't need that. Don't quote me for any other model or brand. I don't know. But this one in particular, I know, has got a sensor built into it. And then there's that one separate if you need it. All we've got, live and neutral supply, live and neutral load. It's as simple as that. And that is going to go in there next to the black switch. All looking smart. So let's get that on there now. And there you go. Quite nice. Nice in black, in it. Not sure whether you can see it. Okay, and the camera's not picking it up very well. It's actually quite dark, to be honest, anyway, that pot. It's nice, very nice. It's on. See the uh, the heat element thing there? I can turn it off. Turn it on. Put it on uh, manual mode. It's set to 22, the room's 20, so it's just come on now. And that's that firing away. Tell you what, it gets hot. That gets hot. I you know what I wish I had. Like Nick Bundy's got that uh, Bosch uh, infrared thermal imaging camera. I'd love to use that on there and just see how hot it is. Anyway, now cue the end of the video. This is pre-recorded because I forgot to do the thermostat. So just a moment. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and all that, subscribe, share it. Come on, let's grow the channel. I do appreciate it massively and I do appreciate every single person that watches the video and subscribes, especially the ones that comment. I love a good, uh, good conversation. So yeah, thank you all for that. Um, see you on the next one. Peace.